foreigners can no longer withdraw their money in mainland China. This is not a joke, folks. Even investment guru Mark Mobius is unable to withdraw his cash from HSBC in Shanghai. Mobius, who has been investing in China for 30 years and has a wide network of connections in China, personally told Fox host Maria Bartiromo that he is unable to get his mitts on his own money. The amount of money he cannot withdraw is only three million yuan, not billions of capital. If someone as well connected in China as Mobius can't solve such a small problem, what hope is there for the rest of us? It is very clear the pace at which China is decoupling from the world market is accelerating rapidly. What's the story behind the money? Does it need to be transferred overseas directly? Mobius later revealed to Hong Kong Economic Times that it was the money he earned from selling Shanghai real estate 20 years ago, about three million RMB in cash. However, Shanghai HSBC asked for all documents related to the source of the funds, tax documents, invoices, etc. But he no longer knows where these documents are. As a result, he can't withdraw his money. Withdrawing money from a bank in China can be difficult, let alone transferring money overseas. This is a common problem faced by foreign investors in China. Taiwanese businessmen have also experienced difficulties in withdrawing money from their bank accounts in China. As a result, they have resorted to spending their money overseas by using their Chinese bank cards to make purchases. These restrictions imposed by the Chinese government have caused a sharp 73% year-on-year decline in foreign direct investment in mainland China during the second half of last year. The CCP has a long history of making things difficult for investors, and their promises cannot be trusted. Both domestic and foreign investors have been seduced with various preferential conditions, such as offering pieces of land and promising policies, only to be left without any solutions once the funds and equipment are in place. Officials often excuse themselves by claiming that previous issues are no longer their responsibility due to changes in government officials, and that payment is required to address them. Therefore, investing in communist China means that even if you earn 100 billion, you can only take away a maximum of 30 billion, and this is being generous. The rest of the money will not be returned, and you will be pressured to continue investing in the mainland without the option of leaving. Information about foreign nationals being bullied by the CCP is gradually coming to light in various industries. Mobius has recently spoken out, encouraging American businessmen to expose the unfair treatment they have received in China. When the CCP's reign comes to an end, these creditors will demand the repayment of their debts. But why haven't these people spoken up before? In short, the overall environment has changed and the tide has turned, unlike before. Let's discuss Mobius. He invested in communist China for 30 years and became famous on Wall Street as the Indiana Jones of emerging market investments. This means he was a leader in his field. Obviously, he had encouraged the American financial industry to invest in China. To conduct financial transactions and investments in China, one needs to invest at least several billion U.S. dollars, if not tens or even hundreds of billions of U.S. dollars. Investments at this level are often tied to government officials and require the backing of a wealthy family with connections to the CCP to handle such large sums of money in China. This has been the case for the past 20 years. This time, he faced a situation in which he was unable to withdraw his savings. Without a doubt, he would seek help from the powerful red families with government connections. However, the fact that he publicly exposed the issue shows that the red families behind him were not able to help this time. It's not that these families have lost their influence, but they dared not disobey Xi Jinping's orders. In other words, the issue of decoupling from the U.S. is no longer up for debate among the top echelons of the CCP. The same holds true for the situation in the U.S. If a renowned investor wishes to disclose some information, they would contact media outlets such as the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times. However, if these outlets refuse to report their story, the investor may have to turn to Fox News. What does this indicate? It suggests that these major media outlets may not wish to promote the idea of divesting from China, as they are not willing to see an immediate collapse and still need time to get their own capital out of China. In any case. Wall Street has begun discussing withdrawing from China. 
This indicates that, based on the information obtained, it is already too late to maintain investments in China in the financial sector. The U.S. is poised to take action against the CCP, so it is advisable to withdraw now. The relationship between the U.S. and China is very tense, as reported by various sources. For example, Sequoia Capital, a U.S.-based company that invests in Chinese startups, has been investigated by the White House. Although Sequoia Capital was founded by Americans, it later established Sequoia Capital China. At the end of last year, the Biden administration asked Sequoia Capital to explain why they invest in semiconductors, AI, and quantum computing. Sequoia Capital's Chinese investments are all raised from the U.S., with a capital raising of nearly 8.5 billion U.S. dollars last year. Previously, they had invested in China's e-commerce giants such as JD.com, Pinduoduo, Meituan, and Chinese TikTok Douyin, all of which became very successful. Sequoia Capital had invested in 40 Chinese semiconductor projects before last year. However, in response to concerns over U.S. national security, the Wall Street Journal reported that Sequoia Capital has reduced its investment in Chinese technology companies. Additionally, the company has started to recruit personnel with national security backgrounds for internal self-review purposes. It's worth noting that it was Mobius's private funds that cannot be withdrawn in China. This suggests that the CCP, which is also seeking to decouple, is intentionally preventing these investors from withdrawing their funds. The objective is to remind Biden and the Republican-led House of Representatives that before considering sanctions against the CCP, the U.S. should first account for the amount of money that has yet to be withdrawn from China. Recently, Robert Kaproth, a U.S. Treasury Department official, visited Beijing. Which indicates that the U.S. might be seeking to secure time for American investors to withdraw their investments before confronting China. Additionally, Mobius not only revealed secrets but also advocated for American investors to invest in India and Brazil. A survey of the business sentiment of the American Chamber of Commerce in China showed that most American companies investing in China no longer consider it one of their top three investment priorities. This is unprecedented in the organization's 25-year history. Half of these companies reported not making a profit in China last year. More than one third of companies reported a year-on-year -year decline in their Chinese revenue. In contrast, India was considered the top investment destination, followed by Brazil. In addition, Mobius is optimistic about the U.S. economy, stating that the country is in the midst of a war with the ongoing conflict in Ukraine and increasing indirect conflict with China, which have resulted in increased spending. This is why the labor market is in such great need of workers. High interest rates does not necessarily indicate a poor market. Mobius believes that the U.S. economy is performing well. Meanwhile, the U.S. investment sector is also pulling out of China. This can be seen from the financial reports of Bridgewater Associates, which reduced its holdings in Ideal Auto and Jitai Pharmaceutical by 50% in the last quarter. The company also reduced its holdings in Chinese search engine giant Baidu, online video platform ITE, and fast food company Yum China by 48%. In addition, as the Biden administration is about to impose a ban on technology exports to China, Bridgewater has also sold off major U.S. chip manufacturers such as Micron and Nvidia, reducing its holdings of Microsoft and Apple by 95% and 94%, respectively. Under these circumstances, it is clear that the CCP's funds are decreasing, and they have been aware of this for some time. To address this, they have begun to rectify the financial industry and nationalize the wealth of large businessmen in this sector. Recently, they detained Bao Fan, an internationally renowned venture capitalist who is second only to Xi Jinping in terms of influence in the Chinese financial sector. Among the apps used by Chinese netizens, 90% are related to Bao Fan. Companies such as Alibaba and Didi have relied on Bao Fan's investments to become successful. However, now that Bao Fan has been detained, the venture capital industry is scared and unsure about what kind of investments will offend Chinese government's official position and cross the red line. As a result, USD investment in Chinese startups last year decreased by 8 billion USD, and the amount of USD transactions decreased even further by 74%. 
This means that foreign investors have completely fled and are no longer investing as they have no idea how to proceed. Let's take a look at how foreign investors making large investments do business in China. Investors like Mobius, who has been investing for 30 years, need to have connections and backgrounds in Beijing because in China, all investments are made through relationships. Many Chinese innovation projects are taken over by princelings and officials at the level of provincial party secretaries. Whenever a good invention or profitable idea arises in the private sector and a business plan is developed, the project founder is often replaced by someone with connections the next day. Unfortunately, the CCP does not respect intellectual property, so even if someone sues in court, they will not win. The inventor is at most a technical director who works for the company for one or two years to develop the product. After that, the powerful will transform the equity, restructure the board of directors and kick the inventor out the door. Eventually, the company will become a company of the powerful and all investments in China follow this pattern. Mr. Mobius may just be one of the American investors who have invested in China, but he reflects the sentiments of many American investors who have fell victim to the CCP system. These investors believed they were winners and that Xi Jinping would not be able to touch them because of their connections in the CCP. They failed to realize that the CCP was not only exploiting the Chinese population, but would eventually also exploit foreign investors, including those from the US. With Mr. Mobius's encouragement, more investors will be willing to stand up, speak to the media and provide evidence of their ordeal. This will shape the direction of anti-CCP sentiment, especially within financial or affluent circles. Mm -hmm.